Hi, it's Dr. Navid Iqbal and I welcome all of you to the class on uh, advanced mass spectrometry. Mass spectrometry itself, it is an analytical technique which is used to determine the molar mass, elemental composition and the structure of an analyte, but actually the mass spectrometry uh, does much more thing than th things than this and it is extremely extremely powerful and important technique so it has a numerous applications a large number of applications are there for the mass spectrometry and i want i would like to share some of them uh, with you that will be the justification that why we study mass spectrometry and why mass spectrometry is important just like in the field of proteomic, it can characterize molecules of protein. So, you, this word or this title seems very much easy, but actually proteins are extremely complex molecules. And they're huge and complex molecules, and the mass spectrometry can help in uh, determination or characterization them or giving it structure. The second thing is sequencing of peptides. As you know that the peptides, again peptides are very very huge molecules, they are a lot, lot, huge molecule. For a sample I have drawn uh, a small peptide molecule here. Actually peptides are polyamides and they are, ex they, they are also extremely important biologically and uh, mass spectrometry can help uh, uh, to find out the sequence of the amino acids uh, joining each other and forming the peptide. I mean to say that which amino acids connects with which amino acids to produce the peptide. Just like this. It is, suppose, uh, let's see this, this is the carboxylic uh, carboxylic functionality and this is amine of the other amino acid and this was the carboxylic acid and it produced one amide so and this here it is another one here it is another one here it's another one so almost these uh, some number of the amino acid combined together to produce these peptides but what 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 if these are just two or three three or four uh, amino acids they form this peptide but what about thousands hundred or thousand or five thousand uh, amino acids combining together and producing a peptide its structure its, its uh, sequence uh, determination of its sequence would be a nightmare but mass, mass spectrometry can do it and how it do it after understanding the basics we would be discussing that too screening or diagnosis of a cancer cancers as cancer uh, is a very dangerous uh, illness and it can also be diagnosed with the mass spectrometry by taking the blood of the patient and mass spectrometry can also detect or, or diagnose that uh, whether a person has some sort of a cancer or not. Pesticides in a food, the food we eat, majority of the food we eat comes from the crops or some uh, crops etc etc and uh, there they use uh, the pesticides to kill uh, those small uh, creatures which are destroying the crops so uh, they, they those pesticides those pesticides also come out uh, at the end uh, they, they are also sometimes present or many times they are also present in some quantities in the finished products Mass spectrometry can also identify or determine that which pesticide is present and how much of the pesticide is present in some sort of uh, uh, finished product. So again, very, very important use of the mass spectrometry. Water testing, the quality of water or air we breathing, it can also be determined by using the uh, mass spectrometry. So, isn't it a magical, uh, a magical technique. Yes, it is a magical technique. But how does it 
do these all things. As the mass spectrometry, it does suppose we want to determine the mass of water. Uh, water, but it, uh, it it is very easy. Suppose if we have one liter of water, we can have uh, its mass or weight. We can determine it, place it on a ba balance, and it will tell that what is the weight of the water, uh, the amount of water. But what about one single molecule of water and its weight? It is next to impossible that is a person can isolate a single molecule and then bring it intact without any contamination of the air or anything else and place it on some sort of a digital balance. Suppose here uh, we have water and one water molecule we bring it and uh, my drawing is so much poor, so pardon me for it. It is a, some sort of a balance, and you place it here, <laughs> and uh, some figure or some digit uh, will show uh, on a small screen here. Though it's a classical balance, it doesn't have any uh, of that, but suppose uh, uh, suddenly it tells you the weight of one single molecule. Isn't it very difficult? It is almost impossible uh, to do that, but mass spectrometry can do, can do this. Suppose a solid glucose molecule, they are solid. If we have some glucose molecule, glu uh, some amount of glucose molecule, and someone tell us that isolate one molecule, or from the glucose and place it on some sort of a balance and tell me its mass. Uh, it would be more than a nightmare for a person because how can someone isolate a single molecule of a glucose? But the mass spectrometry can do this magic. This is some uh, sort of um, basic principle of the mass spectrometry which I am telling about what the mass spectrometry does what is its basic principle? A large wall, water molecule or some other analyte in a form of a solid or liquid or a gas, it just isolate a single atom out of it. Or bring it to the balance and tells us that what is its mass. It is extremely, extremely important. And how does the mass spectrometry does it? So uh, we will be discussing that uh, in the coming lectures. But there is another thing which is even more uh, confusing or difficult than achieving this. It can also tell uh, you the elemental composition that what types of elements are present in that molecule. Again a magic. Because it, it, suppose somehow someone manage uh, uh, to isolate a single molecule if he or she doesn't know that what this is and place it on some digital balance and it tells you that it is the bad but mass spectrometry can also tell you it's like for example if you have a glucose molecule someone give you a powder and you don't know that it is a uh, what what these molecules are and the mass you go to the mass spectrometry lab and the mass spectrometry uh, and my mass spectrometer will show you what is the weight of this molecule but more importantly it will also tell you that what is its elemental composition, how many carbons, how many hydrogen, how many oxygens are present in it. Again, isn't it a magic? It sounds like a magic, but no, it's a, a reality. And finally, in coordination with other spectroscopic techniques, this magical mass spectrometric technique can also tell you or confirm the structure that how those things are connected. Isn't it a magic? And we will be studying that and I hope you will be enjoying it and I will be enjoying it too. Thank you.